Kuwait is liberated. Iraq's army is defeated. Coalition forces fought this war only as a last resort and look forward to the day when Iraq is led by people prepared to live in peace with their neighbors. If there is one thing militarily America can be held accountable for, it is failing to finish the job. Witness far too many instances in past wars and currently even certain conflicts we see now. At the moment, make no mistake, we remain at war in Iraq. And the raw fact is that we are going to pseudo finish this one and then begin our sadly inevitable trek toward a fourth war in Iraq. And there is almost nothing that can stop this from happening. Welcome back to Midpoint. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel and expert in counterinsurgency, currently headmaster of the Haverford School just outside Philadelphia, author of the book Knife Fights, a memoir of modern war in theory and practice, John Nagel joins us today. John, thank you so much for being here today. John, can you hear me? Okay, John, you can hear me, but we cannot hear you at the moment. Let's try it again. Okay, we're going Okay, we're going to go ahead and try and fix John's audio here in just a moment. Let me first bring to the fore that in foreignpolicy.com on the website recently, John Nagel wrote an article called Get Ready for Iraq War 4. Now, of course, we're in Iraq War 3 at this point, but he says that a fourth is inevitable. In his own words, the first Iraq War was necessary and conducted well as wars go. The second was unnecessary and conducted poorly at first, but ended up in a reasonable place given what a fiasco it had been at the start. The third war, entirely preventable, caused by the premature departure of U.S. troops after the second. And he says here that it is much too soon to say how this will turn out, but it is not too early to say that unless America gets the end game right, something they have failed to do in a number of different circumstances, the United States will fight yet another war in Iraq before too long. The key here, as many people have said over and over again, is that Iraq is three nations inside of a single state, held together by really, in many cases, what was a brutal dictatorship under Saddam Hussein. There were pre-war warnings that hundreds and thousands of troops would be required to police Iraq after the government collapse. But America, they actually came in with a fraction of the number that was necessary. John Nagel now joins us via the telephone. We have taken care of the Skype problems that we have had. So, John, I've read a little bit of your article here that you printed in foreignpolicy.com. Let me just ask then, you say that it is inevitable that we are going to fight that fourth war in Iraq. Really, though, can we not stop it at this point? Is there any way to make up for all the mistakes that we've made and stop Americans from dying in Iraq again? So that article was, there was a plea to do just that, to take this war seriously. And the, the challenge we've had, I think, is um, the, the incorrect decision to withdraw American troops from Iraq at the end of 2011 uh, allowed room for space for the Islamic State to grow and, and, and gather strength there. And now, uh, unfortunately, sadly, more Americans, I think, are going to have to die in Iraq my hope is that we'll get it right this time. We'll understand that if ground is important enough for Americans to die on, it's important enough to continue to station American troops there so that we don't have to fight there again. But is there any way now, we only have about a minute left here, then we have to take a break. We'll come back, though, thankfully. We'll have a few more minutes to talk due to the, uh, the technical issues here. But how do we stop it? Militarily, it would seem to me that the military wants to go in and do it. But again, we have administrations that are sitting there not allowing us to finish the job. How can we be so stupid? <laughs> uh, my, my, hope, my hope is that this is a politically driven decision, that the reason for that decision will end tomorrow with the midterm elections, and that we will start taking this war as seriously as it deserves as soon as later this week. How can the President of the United States not get this one right with so many members of the military telling him that if you do this, if you take troops out so quickly, it's going to fail and fall apart? I'm, I'm deeply disappointed by the decision thus far. I do have confidence in our military leadership. I think General Dempsey is saying the right thing, and I think the political context in which his advice is received will change, honestly, dramatically tomorrow. All right. Well, unfortunately, as I noted, we are out of time and we are not coming back. That was my bad on this, John, simply because of the scheduling here. I'm sorry again for the technical problems that we had. But again, we need to get you back on. We need to dig into this a little more in depth. John Nagel, Always. thank you so much for joining us.
Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, John. Thank you so much. We'll again take care of things. Have John back again to see if indeed a fourth Iraq war is inevitable, as he and so many other claim. After a short break, the one thing we have to do in order to best prepare for midterm election day, laugh and laugh a lot. And after 51 minutes at the hour, nothing to laugh about in Florida, where the governor's race showcases everything that is wrong with American politics. That and so much more coming up right here.